Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja and I want to welcome you back to another edition of your Adrenal Fix. Hope you guys are doing well. I'm really excited to talk to you about um, the relationship between adrenal fatigue and liver. Uh, when I say liver, liver congestion, toxification or being able to detoxify or being very toxic, um, liver congestion, sluggish liver, fatty liver, um, all of the things that will impact a liver um, for not doing its job. And the liver is such an underrated organ um, in terms of what it does. It does so many things. It, it, it's, it really manufactures and makes things. Um, it, it really ma makes things and breaks things. And when we talk about genetic testing and we talk about methylation, um, all of that is predominantly taking place in the liver. So you may have an MTHFR problem or a COMT, and a lot of you guys know a lot of that stuff already, but looking downstream from the cell, it's the actual liver. So if the liver is not doing a good job, um, it's not going to make and break over 250 cellular processes in the body. And, and that's going to be very impactful for energy production, for being able to think clearly, to being able to have um, energy throughout the day and handle stressors, to being able to have um, your hormones being produced and being able to make immune cells and, and all of the above. And so what is the relationship between that and the adrenals? Well, you got to think when we're stressed out and we're under a lot of um, deadlines and we have problems with relationships and we are um, under the, the, the problem with a bad health condition and we're not able to work or be productive, um, that's very, very stressful and that causes your cortisol levels to surge. Cortisol is a hormone and hormones are pre predominantly um, used by a lot of the, the, the materials that the liver processes and it's also broken down by the liver. So if that process of making and breaking is not doing a good job, um, then it can create a vicious circle or cycle of having the adrenals um, be further taxed because the, the liver is not doing a good job. Um, on top of that, the liver is, is a really important organ for um, storing things. And so if we have a really bad relationship with food, and there's a lot of problems with the way you break down food, there's a lot of problems with the foods that you're eating that are too sugary based, um, the chemicals that are in the foods, the chemicals that are in the environment, um, the, the body um, is, the liver is having to deal with all of that. So I want to just give you an outline. Basically, we're going to be talking about um, different ways to cleanse the liver. And it's not going to be a sexy sort of talk. Um, it's not going to be um, just all about milk thistle. Uh, I can't believe how many people will tell me, you know, when I ask them, okay, what's your plan for helping your liver? What are you doing for it? Oh, I'm taking milk thistle. And okay, milk thistle could be supportive for the liver. Um, but it's not lowering the burden that's going on to the liver every day. Um, and it's also not helping with um, the liver's ability to get rid of, you know, the toxins. So that's a big, a big deal is, is that milk thistle, if your strategy for, for fixing the liver is milk thistle, um, you are bringing a knife to the gunfight. You just do not have enough ammunition to help that. Um, the next thing we'll talk about is the genetic component. So absolutely, people are um, susceptible to liver and adrenal problems based on their family tree, based on the fact that there's autoimmunities, there's, um, there's uh, Hashimoto's, there's Graves' disease, there's um, IBS and Crohn's and colitis, there's rheumatoid arthritis or psoriasis, um, there is uh, even neurological disorders like uh, um, MS or Parkinson's or lupus or even immune problems, um, cancers, cardiovascular problems, and of course neurotransmitter problems like depression, anxiety, um, OCD, um, pain, um, not being able to calm down and being relaxed. All of those, if that's a family trait, then you know you have uh, inherent weakness to develop um, some, some, some problems when you have stressors and it's going to impact both your adrenals and your liver. Um, and we'll talk about that. I'll take you in front of my graph and we'll talk a little bit about that. And then lastly, we'll talk about the tests and supplements 
um, that I find to be most helpful. Uh, a lot of the times people just look at it and say, okay, my liver enzymes are, are normal and, and so I'm fine, but yet I don't feel good, I feel congested, I feel bloated, I have brain fog, and, but my liver enzymes are fine. The first thing I'll say is, um, number one, the, the ranges are, are quite high. Um, and I believe it's like 46 um, or, or as high as 46, 0 to 46 that I see or 0 to 34 that I see. Um, but usually it's in the 40s or 50s that doctors say, oh, don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it yet. Um, so number one, a lot of the times you may be functionally high. You may be above 26. That's the ideal range um, between 10 and 26. And, and, and you are at 34 and they're saying it's fine. You're just not sicker than that average sick person. And I got news for you that the society's not very healthy anymore. So if you're compared to them and you are normal, then it's not saying that much. You want to be definitely healthy compared to as if you're getting a A-rated policy on your insurance and you want to have great premiums, they're not comparing you to that average sick person. Um, and so we'll talk about some supplements too. So let's talk about cleansing the liver. The first thing I would say is um, prevention. I mean, it's not sexy, but look at what junks up the liver. I mean, chemicals in our environment, in our air, in our food, in our water, it's everywhere in our environment, in your home, the outgassing of formaldehydes, um, you know, the problems with Wi-Fi, believe it or not, um, the problems with the foods, um, the you know your dry cleaning um, the all of these chemicals the the solvents and the the industrial cleaners um, the lotions we're putting on our skin even the toothpaste we're using um, all of these things all of these things have a lot of chemicals in them that got to get processed by your body and specifically the liver and if the liver is not doing a great job it's gonna build up and where does it like to build up? It builds up in fatty tissue. And so a lot of the times I'll consult with people and they'll lose weight, they'll lose a bunch of weight and they'll crash. It's because they've just liberated a lot of toxins and their liver is not good at processing that. And next thing you know, they get really sick. Um, but so, so, you know, less is more. I told you about lowering your stress footprint and really being a bit neurotic about things and looking at, you know, are, the, are there chemicals in your, in your cleaning solutions? Are there chemicals in your foods? Are there a list of ingredients that you can't even, you know, pronounce, let alone, you know, even identify? Um, is there MSG and natural flavors? Is there pesticides and GMOs and organophosphates? I mean, all of those things are really interesting impacting your liver um, and, and it's a big problem. Um, so that would be the first thing. Um, but the next thing I would say is, how are you doing uh, in terms of digesting your food? Because if you're not digesting your food and you're cooking it to really high temperatures and you're eating a lot of hydrogenated vegetable oils, um, then what's gonna happen is you are not gonna digest those foods completely. And then what's gonna happen is, is that food sits there and it's partially digested and now it makes it through that portal artery into the hepatic system uh, to the liver and the liver is having to process all of this extra undigested foods and it has to work really hard. It needs energy to do that. But guess what? You're not deriving the energy out of the food. It's inflaming in your GI lining it's creating an immune reaction and your adrenals are pumping out massive amounts of cortisol which requires uh, a lot of hormone production which is done by the liver and the liver is just tired and it doesn't know what to do about all this so um, it would necessarily stand to reason that along with reducing your chemical exposures and really trying to lower your stress footprint um, is also trying to help with your digestive processes. So what can we do? Well, we can eat a lot of fermented foods. Um, fermented foods are already um, digestive enzymes in there. Um, you can slow heat it um, or they can be raw um, and, and you can, you know, kefir or sauerkraut or you know, fermented vegetables. Um, those are things that can be really supportive and should probably be there every meal. 
um, also making sure that you're getting some hydrochloric acid, and we'll talk about that in the genetic component in a second, um, but all that partially digested food sits there, it rots, it doesn't go anywhere except to the liver, it creates an immune reaction, and guess what else we're doing? I mean, we are carnivores. We are eating way too much protein, and that's putting a lot of pressure on the liver too to have to break all that down. And so, or we're eating so much, you know, sugary refined foods, and you're burning through all your, your mitochondrial nutrients, all your B vitamins, and all your enzymes, and all your micronutrients, and your minerals, and you're not even absorbing them anyways. So it becomes a big problem. Um, so you've got to reduce the burden. And again, you're like, well, what are, what are we going to do for the liver? We're already doing a lot of stuff. We're like, you know, when, Mr. Miyagi, when do I get to fight? When do I get to finally do it? And like, we're waxing on and waxing off. And if you're, you know, you remember that movie, it's like, I want to get in there and fight already. I want to do milk thistle. I'm doing milk thistle. It's fine. But guess what? You know, let me, you know, throw a punch and you can see your liver is already getting stronger because you're not actually putting chemicals and sprays and oils and and junk oils and uh, undigested foods and foods that are cooked at high temperatures and so much sugar and so much protein that it's just overwhelming your immune system um, so that's a big part of it as well that food will rot and one of the things it does which we'll show you up here is that rotting food cr creates a lot of aldehydes um, and aldehydes are going to really slow things down. That's almost like you feel drunk um, because that's sort of a byproduct of, of alcohol uh, metabolism. Um, and you get that a lot with molds and you get a lot that with, with candida um, and, and you get that a lot with even pesticides too. Um, and you get that a lot with MSG. And you know, there's people out there that make supplements and they have um, MSG and aspartame in their artificial flavors in their supplements. But meanwhile, those supplements are creating a lot of waste products that are impacting your liver. And when it impacts your liver, it may be good in the very beginning. So think back and remember, was there a time where you remember when you're, you, know, you started really good with a supplement, um, but then after a little bit of time, it didn't work very much anymore? It could be because that supplement has built up toxins in your body from all of the talcum powders and the, the flow-through agents and the magnesium stearate and all of those things that are really going to impact your, your liver. So um, raise the hands because you know what, no one's commented so far and I always like it when you give me like a heart, a thumbs up, a share, a like, whatever you do. Um, just let me know you're there because it doesn't look like I'm getting any comments today. It might be a setting. I, sometimes those settings go off. Um, but anyways, there's no comments. Um, so as far as um, that, then obviously looking at your pesticides, looking at your foods, um, looking at um, your chemicals in the foods, very, very important. That's part one of the cleanse. Digesting is another part of the cleanse. Um, let's look at the genetic component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you up over here and we're going to move this out of the way and we're going to bring you a little bit closer. We're going to look at the genetic component. So one of the very first things that I want you to realize is, is that if you are bringing a lot of toxins to the liver, you are depleting your glutathione. And glutathione is the body's number one antioxidant. And if you're depleting your glutathione, then you're losing your ability to detoxify. You're losing your ability to put out free radicals. And that's putting a lot of pressure on that liver. Um, so what is the problem with that? And I think, I, don't, I think it was Tina. She said, well, my doctor the other day told me to take some cysteine. And cysteine is a sulfur-based protein that is going to help make more glutathione. But if you don't have a lot of um, B vitamins on hand, and you're going to need B6, and you're going to be depleted in B6, then you are not going to be able to push that cysteine into glutathione. Now, something that's really important with B6 
is it helps um, precipitate the bile, meaning it will hold cholesterol in suspension. So what does that mean in English? It means that's where we get bile backup and that's where we get gallbladder sludge. And, and it's really important to talk about if we're going to cleanse the liver, then we got to make sure that that gallbladder is working in unison so it's able to make um, healthy bile flow that's not precipitating bile from cholesterol. So we got to make sure we have enough B6. So one of the most important nutrients that I really love is the B max. And, and, and there'll be a link to that after this, after this webinar. Um, but B6 is a real player and, and you want to make sure you're not getting it from a, you know, a, a synthetic source. And the problem is, is that when you eat so much sugars and you put so much pressure on the liver, you deplete yourself of the bees and that becomes a super big problem. Um, so, so that's a big thing. Um, also looking at some of these antioxidants, um, SOD, catalase, and then glutathione, those are enzymes that I see very, very commonly being polymorphic. And what does that mean? It means the enzymes are either plus plus or plus minus. And if that's the case, every time you make energy happen in your body, you're creating um, hydroxyl radicals, superoxides, hydrogen peroxides, and, and those are creating a lot of free radical damage, and that's where you feel achy and sore and arthritic -y and and muscle pains and fibromyalgia and all of those things, and that could be because you don't have good antioxidant status because there's a genetic predisposition. Um, so we'll talk about what supplements you can do to help that, but awareness is really, really important um, to be able to do that. So cysteine and glycine are two nutrients that will help make glutathione. Um, but if you don't have the proper nutrients to regenerate glutathione and you have a lot of stress, you're going to slow that down. And that's really where stress comes in is when we're stressed out, these circles are spinning out of control, kind of like the monkey who that used to dance to the to the music. Imagine the, the guy who plays the music is spinning it crazily out of control and the monkey's going all crazy. That's what's going on with your enzymes. Um, but your enzymes are, are not working well either and you fall behind and it impacts your liver and your adrenals. Hopefully that made sense. The other thing I want to talk to you about is the importance of, obviously a lot of you guys want to know about MTHFR. If that MTHFR is not working very well, then what happens is you don't regenerate your DNA very well. And if you're not regenerating your DNA very well, you're not, you know, you're not repairing your, your liver. You're not repairing your cells. You're not repairing your tissues. You're not making red blood cells. Your platelets are low. I saw someone the other day in the forum say, my white blood cells are low. That could be because we have adrenal, liver, absorption, too much toxic exposures, not to mention hormones. I mean, we haven't even talked about that. So all of these things should be making your head spin. But if you have a plus plus or a plus minus, all of a sudden now, you are even slower at regenerating your DNA, you're slower at making energy, and you are causing more and more toxic buildup in your body, which is creating more free radicals, and those free radicals aren't being put out by the firefighters, and those are being depleted. So hopefully that made a lot of sense. Um, there's a couple of other um, really important cofactors, like iron. So if we have iron deficiencies, um, then that can really impact your, your ability of catalase to, to put out free radical problems. Um, also, you need to have copper and manganese. So that's where minerals come into play. And remember, I've told you that it's really important to test your, your, your pH to see where your mineral status is. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to talk to you about some other enzymes that we look at. Um, we look at MAOB. Um, we look at COMT, um, we look at um, P, uh, PMNT, um, and all of these enzymes are really important for breaking down your neurotransmitters. And if they're not working well, and there's a lot of free radicals, um, those are accumulating, and that's creating a lot of excitation, and that's causing more adrenals problems, more sympathetic issues, and guess what? you're told that your liver is normal, that there's no problems with that. So I just wanted to kind of go in there and tell you, hey, if your MTHFR or other enzymes that aren't working well, aren't doing a good job, you're not repairing your DNA, um, as a result, 
Um, you're potentially not regenerating um, the energy to be able to make glutathione, which is and catalase and SOD to be able to put out the free radicals, which is further putting pressure on your adrenals and your liver. Um, and then also you're not able to make your neurotransmitters and your hormones to be able to be made and broken down effectively. And on top of that, that's creating um, a whole other backup on your liver and your liver is just like had it. So we get night sweats, um, we, we get um, inability to sleep throughout the entire night, we get adrenaline surges, we can't balance our glucose, we get some reactive hypoglycemia, and all of this has to do with this. I mean, it's a really important factor. I'm um, coming back over to here. Um, let's look at some of the things you can do about that. So one of the main first supplements that I really like is our alpha lipoic acid. Um, I will have a link to that underneath this, um, this, this webinar. Um, and I'll give you a couple of um, instructions where you can save up to 15% on a lot of these supplements. Um, I do like research nutritionals. Um, this is a, um, a combo, it's a liquid, and it's a mixture of our lipo lipoic acid and vitamin C, both very important antioxidants. And our lipoic acid um, will help preserve glutathione. It will help detoxify and regenerate your antioxidants so that you're not putting such an inflammatory cascade on your adrenals and on your, on your liver. Um, that B-Max... Um, where is it? I had it out for you guys, um, but I don't have it out anymore. Here it is here. Um, again, I, I really think that everyone should be on, on a B-Max um, product. Um, this one is a purely fermented uh, live source um, um, uh, in its end chain, meaning it's not folic based, it's, it's methylated, it has all the different types of Bs, and, and I think really everyone should be on that. Um, especially if you're dealing with a liver or a, um, an adrenal issue. Um, also, digestive enzymes. We talked about the importance of reducing the burden of, your, of the undigested foods that go through that hepatic portal artery and cause a lot of problems. Obviously, you want to avoid high fructose corn syrup because that just goes right to the liver and gets processed and it becomes a fatty liver. So you really got to look at your, your, your sodas, um, your high um, corn syrup, fructose, stuff like that. Um, you know, betaine, hydrochloric acid betaine, it has to be um, sort of a live source or a, like one of the supplements we use is from a fermented sugar beet. Now it's not gonna have high sugar, but if it's manufactured in a lab, it's gonna have those synthetics and those excipients in there that are gonna put pressure on your liver and you're trying to take pressure off the liver. Um, so that's really important. Minerals, I mean, minerals are super important. I had a talk with someone who was telling me they do electrolytes, and most electrolytes are sugary. And I used to really like a lot of electrolytes, but you know, I started measuring my glucose, and every time I did those electrolytes that had like stevia that was supposed to not make your glucose levels go higher, made my glucose levels go higher. And you know, the person I was talking to today said, well, it's not supposed to do that. And I was like telling my blood, hey, you're not supposed to go up when I take you. Um, but my blood didn't care, it went up. And then when I ask you guys, are you taking your glucose levels, you say no. And then when I ask you how much you know, carbs are you eating a day, I don't know. Um, and, and that's unacceptable if you're suffering and you wanna get better, you need to know that stuff. Um, castor oil packs, those are huge. So um, basically what you're doing is you're using a pure castor oil source where it's not heated and you're putting it over the abdominal area or the gas, you know, the liver or the gallbladder and you're really um, soothing that area and drawing out toxins and something really gross is what you're doing is if you have um, a liver, liver fluke, um, which I'll be doing another Facebook Live on shortly um, next week with a good friend of mine, um, or you have um, uh, amoebas or giardia, something really gross is those eggs, they lay their, their eggs in sort of the peritoneal area outside of the GI tract. So when you put a castor oil pack on that, um, then you're heating that up and you're sort of forcing those eggs back into the canal, and then we'll do like some peristat and sort of flush that out. Which brings me to my next one, coffee enema. 
I don't know what it is with everyone, but that's like a four letter word. I mean, I'll tell you my story. People who've heard this from me, I had it in my kitchen for a year and it was like over here and I would walk by it for a year not doing it. It's like, no way am I doing that castor oil pack, uh, castor, the coffee enema. Um, but then I did do it. And, and the benefits, like I said to Frank today, I said, hey, Frank, on one side of the page, write down the Ben Franklin you know, argument, the pros and the cons. And the cons is, yeah, it's invasive, it's messy, it sucks. Um, you know, who wants to, to do that? Um, but on the other side, it's just so much benefits. It's, it, I mean, it's been around for centuries. Egyptians did it, early Egyptians. And they do it at the Gersten Institute and Hippocrates. And, and they, this is how they detoxify and get over it already. And so, I mean, you can get a castor oil pack. Um, really, really important. Um, basically, I keep saying castor oil pack. You can get a coffee enema um, pack. Basically, you're heating up about 16 ounces of water and grinding a coffee bean. Now, the coffee bean has to be um, non-pesticide, non-moldy, and you want to grind it just before the the uh, the the um, you know heating it up um, bring it to a boil and then bring it 10 minutes cool it and then typically um, you add another 16 ounces of filtered water and and you go have a party I mean get over it already I mean I can't tell you how many people that I'm working with let alone I've talked to and they've had it there um, and they're not doing it and and you got to do it now I wouldn't just jump right in there and that's where a lot of you guys crash is you're just doing you may be saying okay milk thistle is is what I'm doing but I'm gonna do you know a major detox for my liver um, but guess what your absorption sucks you have major inflammation your minerals are depleted um, you have uh, huge antioxidant reserves that are gone um, free radical buildup is crazy um, food is rotting liver is congested and you're going to try to to run a 24 mar you know 24 what is it 26.2 marathon and you didn't even put your shoes on yet and you think well I did a liver detox and it didn't work for me or even did coffee enema and it didn't work for me and so you know it's like saying I went for a marathon and it didn't work for me well did you train for it did you do anything about it I mean if you didn't then that's a huge problem um, so those are some of the products that I have um, I'm a bit disappointed because I didn't really get any comments. I see that there's 29 people here. I'm sure that you guys are commenting, but I don't see any comments. Um, if there's any questions, sometimes this happens where um, I don't get any comments for the whole time and then I'm not able to answer any of your questions. Um, but what I will do is I will give you a link to the doctor supplement store after this. Um, I can tell you though, you can call their number. Um, they are on hand waiting to sort of take your call. Um, they're open to 6 p.m. Central Time. So um, that's, still, that's still there, I think. Um, actually, it's probably just closing now. Um, but the number is 877-846-7122. 877-846-7122 and I'll, you'll have a replay of this. Um, they'll give you a 15% discount and I created a kit and it's, it's basically a liver support kit um, and I'll put all that information in there. Um, I, I, I'm not really trying to sell you it, um, but I, I would rather you do proper nutrients than the ones that are um, pesticides, moldy, um, have radiation on it, um, are GMO'd, um, use corn starch, and, and really crappy stuff, and ultimately it's not gonna do you uh, any service. So um, I hope that was helpful for you guys. I know I rifled through all of that. Um, I do see that there are some people here, but I don't actually see if you're asking me any questions, and I don't know why it does that, but from time to time it does do that. Um, but anyways, um, I will have, I've got a couple of really awesome seminars coming up, or a um, couple of Facebook Lives. I'm gonna be talking with Carrie Jones. She is the, um, the, the head tech um, uh, doctor for Precision Analytical. We're gonna be talking about a new test that they do. It's called the Cortisol Awakening Response. And we'll also be talking about um, the Dutch Complete, um, sorry, not the Dutch Complete, the, um, the cycle mapping, where we can look at your cycle throughout the month and see why you are having problems with ovulation or hormonal imbalance, and that's a new option. Um, I also have a good um, talk coming up with a good buddy of mine, um, Dr. Um, Brant Larson. We're gonna be talking about parasites, liver flukes, and different strategies you can do for that. 
Um, so um, it's all about helping you guys and, and letting you know that this is a real problem, that I, I, I feel your pain, I was had your pain at some point in my life, and, and, and people always say, how long does it take to get better? Um, and, or do you ever get better? And yes, you do, um, but it's a verb. You know, getting better is a verb. And I, you know, I, I guess someone who watches this, I told her, you know, liver detox is a verb. It's, it's about doing it on a daily basis. Um, are you taking more um, funds out of the account than you're putting in? Um, ask your bank account how much it would like that if you just kept taking more and more funds out of it and didn't replenish it. Um, and, and that same goes for your liver. Are you putting more toxins in your body than you're taking out? Um, because if you are, um, there's a negative deficit there, or positive deficit um, in terms of your liver, but negative deficit in terms of beneficial health stuff. So hope that was helpful for you guys. Um, I'm going to get mad at Facebook for, for not letting me see why there's comments here. Um, but uh, anyways, I hope you found that helpful. And don't forget, I always do 45-minute um, consults to troubleshoot what's working, what's not working, and, and specifically where you want to be. And if I feel I can help you, I'll let you know. But don't just um, um, you know, not show up, A, and B, not show up to get better uh, and, and be serious about it. So anyways, um, that's it for now. Um, again, my name is Dr. Uh, Joel Rosen. I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja, and I look forward to ending your uh, adrenal fatigue nightmare. Have a great evening.